Thank you. Um, in this little talk, I'm going to try to explain to you how a sort of healthy guy uh, playing the saxophone and making a living out of it would suddenly turn to start singing opera <laughs> at the age 32, you know, um, from scratch, when my career finally had started moving. Um, what happened was that I had just recorded my second solo album in 2009. I was alone in a church, I was improvising. But then after the session, I felt really low. I was questioning whether I was in love with the project anymore. I was feeling that I was repeating myself, even though I was improvising, or at least said I was improvising. Um, I felt I'd painted myself up to a corner, into a corner. And, uh, I had stopped listening to jazz. I didn't listen to jazz anymore. So I felt it was sort of time for a break. Um, and then I, I went to New York. I went there for an inspirational stay. And a friend of mine, a Norwegian friend, he uh, asked me to come with him to the Metropolitan Opera. I thought, opera, OK. Uh, the smell of mothballs and <laughs> Chanel number no. five. You know, I was. Oh. Um, <laughs> But we saw, I, I came with him, and, and we saw uh, um, Cavalleria Rusticana and Pagliacci, two one actors paired together. And it's, I was just blown away by the timelessness of this, by the sheer grandeur of those uh, mothball smelling sets, <laughs> and, and you know, by the fact that the singers, they, they made the whole room tremble with their voices without using a microphone or technology or anything, it was just in them. So I started listening to uh, singers on YouTube and song, sobbing along to them, you know. Uh, and um, I guess I was jet-lagged too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was the, the tenors of the past, the really old tenors that really hit me. Um, and this, that week I went back to the Metropolitan three times. Um, and um, I thought this was a new hobby. But then something even stranger happened. Because uh, um, an artist, a performance artist in Brooklyn, he called me and wanted me to play a solo saxophone uh, show in one of his art openings. And uh, as I was sound checking, I met this, uh, this uh, op uh, opera singer. And she was going to per perform with him. He was, <laughs> he was drinking Jack Daniels and smoking pot on stage. And, and, and he sort of pointed towards me to come on stage, and I was reluctantly entering. And while I was entering, doing my solo show, he actually crawled into a piano, starting banging the strings while I was playing, like not for the reasons of me making music, it seemed. So I was, okay, then I thought, I'm done with free jazz forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, well... <laughs> And I sort of pointed to this, uh, this uh, great uh, opera uh, soprano, and we, went, we, we fled from Brooklyn into Manhattan and had a dinner and, and decided to meet the next day. And then we met to make some music together, to make a duo. I would be playing saxophone and she would be singing. And I just felt, oh, I'm repeating myself again, this free jazz repeating thing. And I, it just burst, burst out of me, uh, I want to sing like that too. And we were in New York, so she just picked up the phone and called her teacher. <laughs> and I had an appointment the next day. Um, so I, I knocked on the door to Pamela. Uh, she lived on the Upper West Side, like all the opera divas. And uh, she asked me, what do you want to sing? <laughs> and I said, I want to sing opera. <laughs> oh, do you have any repertoire, any arias particularly like, that you like? <laughs> Uh, no, you see, I went to the Met uh, last Tuesday. <laughs> um, so um, we started doing this. Uh, I mean, no, we Norwegians, we have the, our language really in the back, you know. Like <laughs> and Italian opera is more like this, you know, so you have to train to get the, the language only here, you know. Uh, and she was, she, we did all that, and we did like. I, I thought this was so exotic, I just loved it. And I remember feeling like 16 again, and this woman was telling me what to do, you know? And, and in jazz, nobody tells you anything. Um, so... <laughs> so
So I, I really knew I had to, I just had to follow this track. I, just, I, I had to train to become an opera singer. Uh, no, but what would my jazz peers say? You know, I tried to take some of them to the Met that same period. They were like, yeah, very nice. Uh, um, so I felt sort of like a rebel when I decided that I would, I would say no to jazz gigs and just train opera for one year and see what happened, you know? Just follow the track. Um, so I felt like a rebel inside of a rebel because a jazz musician is supposed to be a rebel. So I was sort of a Russian rebel doll, you know. And, but by making yourself unattractive like that, you suddenly, or not unattractive, but, uh, you know, uh, unavailable, you, you get attractive. So I started getting the, the best gigs I've ever had, you know, and, and working with great musicians and got these wonderful reviews for this solo album that I was complaining about earlier here. <laughs> Um, and I started to feel free in my playing, in my saxophone playing. And in 2011, two years after, I applied for the Norwegian Opera School and got in as their oldest ever student, I guess. <laughs> um, and you should know, I sh you should really know that education in Norway is free. So now I've served myself with two rather arbitrary <laughs> musical educations, first jazz and then opera. And I want to tell you about the jazz education in Trondheim, because it's really good, you know, it, it gets, gives you... Uh, we were given almost total freedom, we were given a key to a practice room, that was the whole thing, really, and then we practiced and practiced... <laughs> <laughs> like this, uh, like a great composer, you know, and... And, uh, and um, no, no, like, obligatory, or what do you call it, classes, and... and uh, but now, in the opera school, everything is much more mandatory, uh, much more teacher-driven, um, and I even had to sneak away from school to be here today, so, um, so it's a little bit different. Um, and, and it sort of sums up for me these two different musical worlds. Um, jazz, where you have to be your own composer, your own label manager, your own uh, band leader. Whereas in opera, if you're a singer, you're a singer, you know? That's the only thing you have to be. And, and, and uh, I believe this really is changing. Uh, rapidly nowadays. At least when I get out of school, <laughs> I will change it. So people now started me to, to ask, when are you going to combine your jazz with opera? And I thought, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I was really, really negative to this at first, because I really wanted to go deeply into opera, and I was sort of bored with jazz anyway, and, and I wanted to explore uh, singing technique and theatrical training and all these things to, make, to become an opera singer. <laughs> Um, but then there, there was a voice student, another voice student, who said to me, well, I suppose uh, you have to quit playing saxophone now that you're becoming a proper opera singer. And I thought, the hell I'm not. And, and, I, and then I tried, I tried on the jazz tour. I re decided now I'm finally going to try this. And we first play, played something. Um, I, th I think it was a Swedish folk song. And then I launched into it, singing it opera style. And, 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 you know, the response was amazing. And, and I knew I'd found something really interesting, and I wanted to do this, and I, I knew I could do this. So I want to try some tenor battle, because that's what I'm calling it. I'm a tenor saxophone player and tenor singer, hopefully, uh, today. Um, <laughs> I will try to do this, but I will conclude this little talk first just by saying that um, if you ask a jazz musician if he's a rebel, he would probably say, by default, yes. That he's sort of breaking free with the establishment and, and following his inner voice and all this. And, and you know, opera is the establishment. Um, so that's why so many jazz musicians openly say that they don't like the opera, I guess. But I think this is so, sort of a cliche because, um, you know, don't all art forms have their own establishment and their own rules? Uh, even, even the most progressive ones. And I think once I get my opera together, I will feel as free in it as I, does, as I do with my jazz. So let's try here now. Uh, I have this little loop box here where I record uh, something on the fly. It usually works. Um,
ti seguì o oh, mi ride di pace lungo le vie del cielo io ti seguì come un'amica face nella notte nel velo e ti sentì nella luce nell'aria nel profumo nei fiori e fu piena la stanza solitaria di te nel tuo splendore in terra pito al suon della tua voce lungamente sognai e della terra ogni affanno ogni croce in quel giorno scordai